disaster hits our communities, many of us look for help from afar. We never really think that we are the solutions our communities are waiting for. When COVID-19 hit Zimbabwe and the lockdown was announced, a number of those in informal sector were affected and they looked to the government and donors for assistance. Local help usually is the last thing on our mind. But today I want to show you that sometimes we are the help that we are looking for. You will watch how young people in local communities have taken it upon themselves to contribute to the fight against coronavirus. Welcome to your favorite show, COVID-19 Talk with Nyari Mashayamombe, where we talk everything COVID. We always want to keep up with what's happening in your communities. How are you surviving lockdown? Have you developed a new skill? I am forever exercising because I love training and exercising. As you heard earlier on, we want to talk about the young people who are doing stellar work in our communities. Amazing, if you ask me. And today, to talk about this work in the studio, I have Ms. Beatrice Savajuki. Madam, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much, Larry, for having me on the show. It's an honor to have you because um, you are one of the movers and shakers in our country. Uh, movers in the sense that you did a lot, you have done a lot of work, for example. Uh, for this country, you are one of the people who led the change of child marriages. Do you want to quickly touch on that? Yeah, uh, thanks, Nyari. You say that I'm one of the young people. I don't know if I'm still. <laughs> just yeah, just gracefully really take it. Take Thank it. You. Thank you. Uh, so, for the constitutional court case that we did on ending child marriage in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. we supported two child brides, Love Ms. Right. Nzuru and Nurun mm -hmm. and took the government to the constitutional court to ch challenge marriage laws. And um, we did that in 2014 together with a partner. Then we uh, ended up having the government, you know, the constitutional court actually ruling that child marriages are unconstitutional mm -hmm. and were banned in Zimbabwe as of 20. 16. Uh, 16, 20 yeah. January. 20 I January. forever remember that. 20 January, <laughs> um, well, I, I just want to give you Marova Ako Urimpenyu, right? Uh, for that wonderful work because it's generational. I know then we went on to celebrate when a Minister of Women Affairs. I mean, there's a lot of people who contributed to that, but that was very significant. But today you are here to talk about something very different. You've, as usual, been brave. Tell us about your recent escapades around COVID-19. Yeah, uh, so I've been together with my team from Roots doing mm -hmm. a lot of work around COVID-19 mm -hmm. um, to support the government um, and also support communities to respond to COVID-19 because right. it's something that's so new to everybody and we're just learning and finding ways of dealing with it. So what I have been doing is I just used my influence as a young person and used my... Oh, you're not like to be yes, called a young person. Welcome. Yes, cool, go ahead. So I used my influence and my social media pages to just mm. reach out to my friends and um, mobilize resources from my friends from uni, from my friends that I've worked with, my former employers, you know, oh, wow. and just mobilized resources and started doing food packs to respond to the lockdown. Mm. Because of the work that I do at Roots, I am aware of the challenges that communities are going through because we work right in communities, hard to reach areas, mm -hmm. farming and mining communities, rural communities. All right. So immediately when the lockdown was announced, I knew that there were, you know, vulnerable groups that mm -hmm. we already work with that were going right. to be affected, mm -hmm. especially like girls who mm -hmm. are in child marriage, mm -hmm. girls and women in general. Mm -hmm. I knew there was going to be an increase in terms of uh, unpaid care. We're mm -hmm. talking about, oh, you need to wash hands mm -hmm. to you know, mm -hmm. prevent the spread of COVID. Yeah. And in most households, there's no running water. Mm -hmm. And women and girls are going to fetch water from boreholes. Mm -hmm. And there's no social distancing happening at those um, boreholes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's some of the work that I immediately knew that I needed to respond to mm -hmm. and also as an organization as Roots. So we've managed to distribute more than 600 food packs to, oh, different, wow. yeah, to different groups. Well done. Thank and you. And where, where have you been distributing that food from? We have distributed... At distributed in Shamba, Bindura, Epworth, um, Chitungwiza, yeah. Mbare National, Mbare Matapi, wow. and uh, Norton. Well, well, citizens, I specifically wanted to celebrate these young people um, who are doing things in their communities 
food hampers to more than 600 people and i remember when covid started i remember one of the shows that i said was we are the solutions mm-hmm. what are you doing for your neighbor neighbor wako arkujigei what umakelwane wawo udlani are they eating did they sleep did, did they eat before they slept so for me i think this is the epitome of what exactly it is that we are talking about um yeah please continue yeah i think you you really raising critical points this is like a time to come together and mm-hmm. act as a collective yeah um you know while the government is doing efforts that they're doing to contribute to the fight against covid-19 this is a time where we come together as individuals and as a collective you know mm-hmm. to just contribute to the fight um you can do one random act of mm-hmm. kindness mm-hmm. making sure that your neighbor have eaten you have supported them to stay at home because we we say we need to flatten the curve yeah and we can do that by people staying at home mm-hmm. so um that's what we're doing complimenting government efforts and what they're doing and i know there are already many other players that are doing mm-hmm. a lot in the community yeah Yeah I mean we will we will listen and we we'll watch later on the number of young people in different communities who are doing this uh, but for me I want to understand um do we need money to begin because we're talking young people and young people are more than 65% of this population that means the solutions are in the young people a young person is watching you right now say ah sister vaka chukire vaka poda vaka din vaka din therefore vane mari do we need money how did you start even kushanda ne roots did you have money and for covid wangone mari yacho yere yekuitanga mafood dumpers Mm-hmm. All right, I'll answer your question in two parts. Yes, we do need the money as young people because as a young person who's been in the front line of just, you know, activism and whatnot, mm. we have been forced to work and do a lot with little resources. Sometimes which strains us as young people, mm. we also need to be resourced and paid, you know, and, right, for the work that you yes, do. Yes, understood. That, yeah. Mm. Uh, but to answer you um when we don't have the resources we just don't fold our hands mm. we make use of what we have for example i used facebook because i knew i had a rich community of friends from you know school and all over the world that could support the cause so you can look around you and see what you can do i know the amazing young people like who are cooking food mm. just from the millimeter mumba mm. 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 and how start from somewhere start from somewhere yes so for me i i, I think you you've just said it two critical points mm-hmm. that we need to acknowledge mm-hmm. yes young people need money mm-hmm. they need to be paid mm-hmm. they need to be resourced mm-hmm. for their effort mm-hmm. but young people can also start from somewhere to be the solution so i think we you bring out a very critical point to say we don't need young people just working for free we need to reward young people for their action uh, but we need to reward them they want to improve their lives they want to go to school they want to fund their education they want to travel uh, they want to uh, to get exposure do other things but when it's a crisis like now or even without a crisis um, it's also important to be the solutions to your community so maybe how does one balance that uh, that need to be paid at the same time and know that but you can be the solution for your community i think it's about identifying something that you're passionate about you me earlier on how I started roots. Mm. I started roots with nothing but uh, just my month salary because I had left my job where I used to work. Uh-huh. So my the next month I was paid. That's the money that I started roots with. I had to split that to pay my bills and to start running an organization. So most of the work that I've done since 2014 it, it was just passion driven. Then the money started to come in. Mm. People see that oh, I'm actually Absolutely. You're doing amazing mm. work. So That's amazing. Yeah. Um I I think you just actually just round up on that powerful point to say you start with from nothing. And I also remember there was a time where I think it's summer time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean yeah. that's enterprising, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> I saw it much at some point and I also was in Mkorokoza in Pindura some Oh wow. God fana. You don't manage the Zambani James table. Wow. So life is not always, you know. Oh my god, did you just out. hear that? Yeah. Wow. Figure out what we want, but mm-hmm. you can always like I said look around you, create networks. If there are young people who are listening, so they're now doing mentorship. But if there are young people who are listening, they don't have friends, you know, we go na nawo kubawa, kuno tamba and what not. Have a rich network right. that when you call upon them mm. they're able to support you like. Tunawa wanepi ma rich networks. 
mwe muna ari kuti ndinotongara kufombia ndina manetwork acho muri interested re kuti toro kuti tipine manetwork yenyu miss Beatrice definitely definitely like there are a lot of opportunities i see on a, you know take a life organization mm. you sometimes do calls for training and mm. stuff like mm. that yeah, so instead of just going on, on social media to watch lives and other things mm. also look out for opportunities if you that person who wants to go far in life Wow, that is amazing. That was Miss Beatrice Savage Gay from Roots, uh, who has been an amazing frontliner as far as COVID is concerned. She's actually been assisting communities. She's told us she's distributed more than 600 food hampers ever since COVID started. What have you done for your community? Honestly, she started from nothing. She started on Facebook. Don't go away. Stay with us. We'll be right back. In Chitungwiza, Samantha Morozaki, a mother of two and a lawyer, began by selling her own clothes to feed her neighbors, and as the kitchen grew, her help extended to the larger community. She says the largest group she has served supper is more than 1,500 people per night. Now she depends on the financial help from the Zimbabwean community, well wishes at home, and those in the diaspora to feed these thousands. The need to cook for people came uh, as a force of nature. Knowing that someone is going to sleep without eating anything really hit me hard. Uh, so as people came through asking for help, maybe a cup of millimil or for oil or for a plan B, I decided that maybe if I cooked for people, I could help more people as compared to giving them dry foods. So that's how the kitchen started, uh, with a packet of rice and 500 grams of beans. Uh, and 24 recipients who came on the first day. Um, the, the lockdown has really affected a lot of people in Shtungwiza. Uh The majority of people coming to the kitchen are informal traders, which means that they need to go out on a daily basis to be able to get something to eat. Um, they, have, they have nowhere to go and the regulations of the lockdown inhibit them from going anywhere until further notice. So they have become the majority of uh, the recipients of the kitchen. Not even the threat to shut down operations from the municipality could stop her. A couple of weeks into the soup kitchen, Samantha's kitchen made news and many came to her defense when the Chitungwiza municipality threatened to close her down. She however managed to win their mercy with voices from the Zimbabwean online community who put pressure on the Chitungwiza municipality to keep Samantha feeding the people. The 35th day of our operation, uh, we received a letter from the municipality of Chitungwiza asking us uh, to shut down operations, saying that the kitchen was operating illegally. They say that we were in contravention of Chitungwiza bylaws uh, part 26. So we stopped operating on the 35th day, which was the day we recorded the highest number of recipients with 1,600 people coming through for supper and we had uh, about 520 children coming in for porridge. So uh, after a couple of days we went through to municipality of Shtungwiza and tried to sit down to agree on a way further. Fortunately for us they agreed that we could continue serving uh, the masses and uh, on condition that we were in line with the regulations. So all the food handlers have been asked to uh, to have medical examinations carried out on them as well as COVID screening, COVID-19 screening. Uh, we also have been asked to change the venue. We'll be operating from a preschool which is about two kilometers from here and we have also been offered uh, uh, municipal police to be able to assist us with uh, social distancing and order at the premise. After all that has happened and where we are today, um, I would encourage people to be steadfast in whatever they believe in. If you want to go uh, and assist a family or a group of children or a whole community, do not back down. It doesn't come easy, but it's not impossible. As long as your heart is in the right place and your mind is set, it's easy for you to create a vehicle that will move in motion paced by you. The plan is to continue cooking for the people until the lockdown is over, but uh, we've We've got a contingency plan to say the next three, four weeks after the lockdown is over, we'll continue to serve people food because people need time to get back on their feet. Your local trader would need to look for capital to start uh, selling tomatoes or to start uh, 
cleaning people's houses, maybe transport money to go to their peace jobs and you name it. And um, from then on, I plan then to reroute the project to be more on a social development uh, level where we are going to empower uh, individuals with skills, life skills, to be able to sustain their own lives because feeding people on a daily basis for the rest of their lives is not uh, is not practical. So we're going to come up with projects that will see uh, your local youth or your local mother, father being able to, to make use of their hands and their brains uh, and able to feed their families at the end of the day. What are you doing for your community? As we come back from this break, we're going to hear from another young person who's doing fantastic work in Chitungwiza. Stay with us. You had from young people earlier on, you had uh, from Bitter Savage who's doing fantastic work in a community, distributing more than 600 uh, food hampers. Now you're going to hear from another young person in Chitungwiza, Tinochenda Sadziwa, who's doing fantastic work for her community in Chitungwiza. A young woman, Tinochenda Sadziwa, a university graduate, stepped up to feed her community. Just like Samantha, with the support and help from her family, she has fed hundreds. COVID-19 did not only take lives away, but it also posed a livelihood. That's where my motivation came to help the community of Shitungiza Zengeza 5. I started by cooking sadza and I fed 20, 15 people the first day. The second day numbers doubled up until I was feeding 156 people. However, I had to stop this when the lockdown was a bit loosened going back to work i could not do all this and i i advertised my work that's where i got some funding and i started doing hard food packs the first time i helped 21 people today i've helped over 35 people and i'm happy with this initiative my name is tafazo sadzio and tino is my sister uh, we've been doing this um since uh, COVID-19 started. I just want to thank the Lord for giving me uh, such mind to young people. The and the program every day. Now, four to the person who has got money but doesn't know what to do, I just want to encourage you to encourage you today that anything can help to help to be with someone, whatever that you have, with the little that you have, but you do not know, just take a few that you have, or the more that you have, and give support, it also adds count. I started calling this Relief Kitchen. 
but now I think it's more like a foundation, a trust. So we call it the Bora Relief Foundation. And I want to thank my parents for supporting me all the way. I started with a few meals that I got from my father's farm. Mm. My mother's giving me the kitchen and the people who helped me to cook. I also want to thank my friends and family for the support, the eco cash that you sent through and everything, prayers and emotional support it has taken us where we are right now. And I also want to thank Nyarazo <laughs> Sari for visiting me today, giving me this opportunity to shine and above all I thank God and I thank you all. Thank you so much. Young women like Eve Chetambarada we have a full-time job elsewhere, but still find time to feed their communities and share food hampers with them is inspiration that we can all be the change in our communities and can start from anywhere. I saw Eve's work on Facebook and thought that together with Beatrice, Samantha and Tino, they are the examples of what community solutions look like. They are the ideal of what you and I can achieve when we put our mind to something worthwhile. You heard from young people who are doing fantastic work in their communities. I do hope that you were inspired to be the change. I do hope that you can start from somewhere. You don't always have to have money to do something. Um, let's be the change in our communities. We also have asked several times that you reach us, you tell us what you're doing in your communities, how you've survived the COVID uh, lockdowns, how you have um, spent your time, what skills you've developed. We want to thank those who've reached out on the screenshots, you're seeing them, and some of them have sent us their pictures uh, in our clothing banner, you will see them. Have a good one, stay good. Hey Mshobo family, thank you for joining me today. Let's keep talking. Join our social media platforms and tell us how you're beating COVID-19. Tell us your stories. What's happening in your communities? Is everything okay? Reach us on our WhatsApp numbers, text numbers, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube channels. Tell us about the good, the ugly, the funny, the talents, the skills you developed during this time. For families or couples, tell us the most funny or unbelievable thing you learned about your partner or your child or your family. You may find yourself on our TV show the next time or you may win a cool, cool prize from us if we like your story. Remember, write in proper spellings. No short and accepted. Ciao.